So you've said this is just uh, exploration at this point. My name is Paul Maggie, and I have rentals here in, in Houghton and uh, uh, small farming operation. But uh, assuming that there's copper there, assuming you find stuff, what footprint would you have for a mining operation? And what would you do with infrastructure to support it? You know, there's no loading docks to take ore out of here any longer. There's no train system, rail system. Well, those are only all challenges where you have to have to confront if, if we are successful. Um, Andy and I did I, just as a point. Andy and I did a sensitivity analysis to see what the what the um, uh, efficient what would be an efficient operation. Um, you know, CNH had um, we're capable of uh, milling about eight thousand times a day. Well, you don't have to do that, but the, the more times per day that you can actually produce the uh, more efficient operation is. I mean, if you're, if you're running 50 times a day, you have to have very high grade ore. But uh, it looks like the break point is around 2,000 tons per day of throughput hit. Um, now, I'm not saying that we're going to meet that, right? And I'm not going to say that it won't be larger. But that, it has to be efficient, it really has to be that much. And uh, so we, we just we don't know. Um, where, you know, where the destination of this might be. I know that uh, Andy and I, when we were, we were looking at uh, the White Pine uh, refinery that uh, Andy actually built when he was at White Pine. Um, and uh, you really have to, you can't, you can't produce fire refining copper like they did back in the, in the, uh, in the CNH days. It's, there's no market for it, so you have to do you have to refine it somewhere. Okay. And thank goodness that refinery is still in place. Hopefully it will be kept, be able to keep it on the uh, uh, care and maintenance until there's some use for it. And so then rail system would be set up for? I don't think so. I think it has to be truck transport. <coughs> so sort of uh, Copper Valley has to be maintained to make this viable? Well, that depends a lot on the, the situation mining situation. Um, <coughs> this district is known for low grade um, deposits, 1% uh, grade. You know, if you look at the most of the deposits, about 1% recovered copper. Um, Centennial was about 1.5%. Uh, but uh, having said that, you know, the, uh, the minor tons per day, minor productivity of Centennial, when Homestake was operating that, Line was higher, the highest of all, of all the mines in Homestead had. So, um, you know, it was good and it was bad. Um, <coughs> so I, you know, I really can't answer that question. And some of the, uh, some of the deposits, like the, the Gratian deposit around, uh, and that's probably like around three percent grade. Um, but the market price will support it. I think, I think we're going to have to have three three dollar copper three to support <coughs> the operation up here. I mean, something that is going to last for a long time. If you look at the projections for copper um, <coughs> copper price, um, we're we're looking at three eighty copper in the face of the, of the worldwide recession. So, what's going to happen when that turns around? Uh, just reading an article yesterday where you know part of the problem that you have with uh, sustainable resources like wind and uh, uh, wind and, and uh, solar is that when the sun stops shining you don't get power. When the wind stops blowing you don't get power. So you have to have some way to store that. And I guess uh, some Stanford researchers have come up with a uh, battery if you like, a storage capability so that you, could, uh, you don't have to have a coal-fired power plant to back up during the night, for example. Um, but it requires lots of copper. copper the copper uh, uh, is going to, demand for copper, I believe, is going to increase significantly. 